Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Some massive, massive news. It's a Los Cabas Open, the Abierto de Tennis Mifel Tournament, ATP, of course, 250. And we're going to go over the draw, preview, and predictions. And the best news I can give you as well, I was talking about media accreditation. We do have a media pass for this tournament. We will have someone on the ground. Hopefully, if things go smoothly, they'll be bringing us live updates uh, so videos even interviews with players hopefully and if you look at the lineup we're going to go through it in a second really i have to say it's probably more like a 500 we've got the world number one medvedev we've got felix orgelio seam we have cam nori cam manovich i mean there's some good players in here to be fair and i'm really excited to go through it. i'm also very excited that we will hopefully be present at the tournament and getting, of course, the channel and the podcast out there even more so uh, to the rest of the tennis world and continue to grow. Uh, and talking of growing, please remember to hit that like button, please, if you haven't done so already, and do subscribe if you're new. Also, look, I mean, do consider if you want to uh, becoming a member or Patreon. Links in the description of this video. Uh, it does really help us out. So thank you to all of you that have done so. And of course, it will continue to help us hopefully get more media passes, be able to travel, et cetera, as well. Um, and yeah, I I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. So fingers crossed everything goes well. And they'll be starting tomorrow. So Monday to Saturday, the final will be on Saturday. Uh, so we're going to be covering the semis and finals. So hopefully we'll have some videos, pictures, all sorts coming out from uh, that tournament and the semis and the final. So stay tuned for that make sure you click the notification bell to get alerted if you're a podcast listener or watcher remember to leave a rating review follow us subscribe all that good stuff go over to youtube as well subscribe um like this video if you don't mind read us help us out thank you so much cool let's get into it in mexico and i would guarantee that it's going to be exciting this is so vibrant the tournament i mean the colors uh, i love the colors of the core and just the stadium it's great kind of this bright bright effervescent colors i know they had uh, i don't know if it was the same uh, venue but in mexico of course the wta tour finals last year when mexico and it looked incredible it really did and i was a massive fan of that i thought it looked a lot better than, than actually the turin one which was similar to the o2 one where it was kind of kind of sleek and, and classy but i was thinking you know what let's do something different and that's what they do in the wta tour finals and in Mexico as well, in South America, something different, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I think I'm going to enjoy this the same way. I think it's just got something about it, and it's it's lively. I think for sure this tournament. Anyway, let's get into it. So Daniel Medvedev is the top seed, as I said, and the world number one currently as well. Uh, he's got a buy in the first round, but he will be the big favorite, of course, going into the tournament. The current champion and returning champion is Cam Norrie, so he'll be looking to win the tournament and go back to back of course he has points to defend um it will be a qualifier versus rodrigo pacheco mendez so i'm going to go with uh, the home favorite uh to beat the qualifier bagnis over escobedo yeah i'm gonna go bagnis over escobedo Brankis against hallis the french player i'm gonna go Brankis to cause a little bit of an upset there and then katmanovic with a bye hanfman i mean he has had some good form on the clay recently beat Dominic team and of course uh went very deep as well in the Austrian tournament so he's got Jordan Thompson it's a tough one though hard courts different surface I'm going to go with Jordan Thompson just because I think maybe Hanfman might be a little bit fatigued and also switching surfaces I'm not sure how well he'll adjust with such a quick turnaround Henry Laxanen against qualifier going to go Laxanen because you know at the moment not sure who the qualifiers are going to be there. Nakashima, sorry, even to be uh, the qualifier there as well. I mean he played so well at Wimbledon against Kyrgios five setter. He looks to just go from strength to strength. Twenty years of age, he's going to be dangerous as well. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how he finishes off the year and also plays uh, this whole U.S. Open series as well. I'm just. I'm excited. I feel like he's got this very mentally tough attitude towards uh, tennis and his game that is pretty rare in, I think, players his age. Uh, I think he's pretty resolute. Um, you know, there's some others as well, someone like a Sinner and Alcaraz, but they're the top, top, top young players 
he's looking to kind of be up there as well. Needs the results to back it up, but I think it's coming. Uh, Echeverry versus Kubler. Kubler again had some good results at Wimbledon. Um, I'm going to get Echeverry to win. Albo versus Feliciano Lopez, the, of course, a veteran. He's won so many matches on the ATP Tour. Made, you know, quarterfinals of slams. Uh, he's gone deep at slams, of course, in the past. And he is towards the back end of his career, but still relatively exciting. I'm going to go um, Feliciano Lopez. Just eke it out with experience, but a tough one. Uh, Seng versus a qualifier. So Seng and then Nori's got a bye, of course. Uh, number three seed and also of course, a reigning champ. Kokonakis Vadasco, that would have been, in my eyes, a very entertaining match a couple of years ago. Vadasco, for me, they're just a bit too old nowadays. Um, and he's just he's towards the back end of his career, and I think it's very tough for him to keep up with the young guns. And Kokonakis should be too fresh, but I also wasn't particularly impressed with him, to be honest with you, at Wimbledon. Um, and look, he's the type of player who I know he... Is pretty exciting at times, and I get that, but I'm not quite sure where his level's at because I feel like he's been not bigged up, but maybe there's been a, quite a bit of hype around him. I'm not sure if that's justified. Um, I mean, he lost in the first round of the Atlanta Open to Martin, of American player in straight sets. I'm not sure how, how what he's going to do on the hard courts, but I'm going to go with... Hukanakas. Qualify versus Steve Johnson. Going to go Steve Johnson. Milman Hernandez. That's going to be a tough one for Milman against a home favourite. Going to go Milman though. And Felix has a bye. So second round picks Medvedev to beat the Mexican home favourite Mendez. Bagnis and Barankis. I'm going to go Barankis. Ketmanovic, Jordan Thompson. Ketmanovic should have too much in the tank for Jordan Thompson. And Nakashima to beat Laxon for me. A tough one though. Tough second round. Edge very to beat Feliciano Lopez and Nori to beat Seng. Kokonaka, Steve Johnson. I'm going to go with Steve Johnson. I think another American is going to beat Kokonaka. So I think it's going to be Steve Johnson and Felix to beat Milman. Then I've got Medvedev versus Barankis. I'm going to go Medvedev. Ketmanovic, Nakashima. That's a fantastic quarterfinal. It really is. Um, I'm going to go Nakashima. I think a bit of recency bias may be in there, but I'm quite high on him. And I just have a feeling if he can serve like he did at Wimbledon, he'll have a lot of success. And he's quite a good move. He just seems to have a good all-round game, but so does Ketmanovic. But I feel like his level, you know, fantastic kind of first half of the year, I feel like he's dropped. There's been a slight dip. Not massive, but it's still somewhat some sort of dip in form um, after having a fantastic kind of six months. So I think that might play a part. It's very Cam Norrie going to Cam Norrie and Steve Johnson, Phoenix. That could be an upset. And Felix has been up and down, although did really well, of course, at the US Open last year. Uh, he is a you know, fantastically talented Canadian. And I think he will enjoy maybe the look. I mean, he's not the number one seed, so that's probably a, a plus because there's no huge pressure on him to win it. Medvedev, of course, and Medvedev is the person who uh, should be winning it, you would expect. Uh, but for Felix, I think. Also, this tournament is probably going to go under the radar a little bit, considering there's other tournaments going on at the same time. That might be good for him uh, because he can concentrate on himself. He, he can kind of maybe sneak under the radar a little bit and I think just get to work and I think he'll win. Semi-finals then, Medvedev and Nakashima. That's a tough one. Um I mean, Medvedev on hard courts, so we've got to pick him, surely. I mean, it's impossible to go against him. Nakashima's a good player, could be three sets, but you'd expect Medvedev to have too much. I mean, he's arguably the best hard court player on tour right now. I mean, of course, won the US Open last year, made the final of the Australian Open. What more do you need? I know Nadal won the Australian Open, but I wouldn't say that he's the best hard court player, even as a Rafa fan. Uh, and for Djokovic, of course, I know he didn't play the Australian Open, but. He made the final of the US Open, he didn't win it. And we'll see, I guess, whether he's able to compete at the US Open this year. But you would say in terms of last 12 months, we're talking about, you know, Medvedev. Uh, then if we talk about the other semi-final, if this happens, this will be a cracking... I mean, I'm hoping these are going to be a semi-finals, right? Because we're covering the semi-finals and finals. And if we can get into the presses and also interview these players, I mean, it will be blockbuster. So hopefully they do get, it th get through the seeds. Um, Cam Nori, 
I think if he makes it this far, that means that his form's been good. Felix, though, is an interesting one. I guess if we're talking about it from a tactical point of view, I mean, Felix's backhand is going to get, you know, examined very, very sternly. Now, I guess we can look back to maybe the match against Djokovic at Rome, which of course is a different surface, but he did manage to stick with Djokovic in large periods in the backhand to backhand rallies. And of course, Camroy being a lefty, he'll be going cross court into the backhand of Felix a lot uh, and trying to really utilize um, the forehand cross and the angles on that side and then trying to drag Felix out, make him uncomfortable, try and get shorter balls and I guess keep away from the Felix forehand, which is you know a massive weapon. So it really depends on how Felix's backhand holds up. I think also if Felix serves like he did and has been serving this year, it's going to be very tough for Nori, I think, to kind of get into the game. He'll, he'll go into Nori's backhand. But the good thing about Nori is that his backhand is arguably more reliable than his forehand in terms of shot tolerance. Um, I think his forehand can be more hurtful. and He's definitely worked on the shot tolerance on that side as well. And it's very, very solid now. But backhand's very flat. And of course, he gives you two different balls. Very flat on the backhand side, a lot of tops on the forehand side. So you you get two different rallying balls on each wing. For Felix, you know, he's added to his game a lot, serve and volleying, um, hits his spots on service, bulked up as well, returns pretty good, forehand's good, backhand's definitely, I think, got more solid on the backhand slices there as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Felix, but I wouldn't be surprised if Cam Roy somehow manages to frustrate Felix. Um, especially in that forehand to backhand rally I was talking about, Felix will be trying to go cross court into the Cam Nori backhand. Might not get as much success as he's expecting, though, from that side. If Cam Nori can be patient and try and break Felix down in the rallies, he might have some success. The only issue he might have is that Felix generally, if he's striking the ball well and you know he's timing the ball well, he will be able to stick with you for long periods of time. You would expect Cam Nori to kind of last longer in those rallies, but that's not doesn't always tend to be the case, especially if Felix is kind of on the front foot and able to step in then and be aggressive. Then Cam Nori will be on the back foot and it's going to be very tough. So Nori's going to have to try and keep Felix at bay and find that balance. Um, it's an interesting one. It really is. I'm, I'm intrigued to see that matchup, so I hope we get it. Uh, but I'm going to go with Felix, so a bit boring, I guess, going with the top two Cs, but it's just that the way it is. Maybe it's just my my hopes to see that in the final, right? And then Medvedev, Felix, I mean, that's the final I think everyone wants. I mean, I would love to see Cam Rory in there as well. I think he would be fantastic to see in the final as well, but um, you know, replacing either player. But I think Medvedev and Felix is the ideal one, right? That's why they're the top two seeds. They're the ones that people really want to see in the final, battle it out. And, of course, they played at the US Open last year, Medvedev won in straight sets, if I'm not mistaken. And it was, there were some moments where Felix had chances and you thought, oh, I should have probably taken that set. Probably should have taken Medvedev to four at least. Didn't manage to. He has improved since then. And I think it'll be three sets. But I do think Medvedev is going to come out on top. And I just think, as I said, it's very hard to look away from him now. I know he's had some time off, of course, because he wasn't able and wasn't allowed to play Wimbledon, which is a massive shame. So I guess the big question is going to be around how rusty he's going to be right, coming into this tournament. And um, I I'm trying to think whether he's played any tournaments since. And I don't think he has, but I could be mistaken. Um, so he played the Mallorca Open, yeah, which was before... Right, Wimbledon, and this will be his first tournament back. So, am I expecting too much from Medvedev to win? I actually don't think so. I think he'll have a couple of easier matches early on, and that will warm him up, and then he'll be fine. So, I'm going to go Medvedev to win. Probably a boring pick. I'm not normally that boring, but I've I've got to go with what I think is is going to happen. And I feel like it's just so hard to pick against him um, on a hard court. It really is, unless we're talking about an Nadal or even a Djokovic. I just think he is in that top elite category uh, for hard-court tennis, for sure. Uh, that's my pick, though. Let me know your thoughts. Who who do you think is going to make the final? Who do you think is going to win? Do you agree with my, some of my picks? Do you disagree? Are you excited for this tournament as well? Um, I would recommend watching it. Forget about the content we're going to be bringing out relating to it, just the actual tournament and the players. I mean, look at the final we could potentially have. That is a 
final for a Masters 1000 tournament if we get it. Um, but I think the overall field is more like a 500 uh, rather than a 250, which it actually is. So some exciting tennis and uh, a very, very vibrant tournament by the looks of it as well. Can't wait to watch. Uh, but yeah, please do stay tuned for, of course, our content coming out for it. We do, as I said, have media accreditation. So we will be bringing you content, you know, hopefully, uh, as long as things go smoothly uh, on from the tournament. Uh, you know, we're reporting from there pictures videos and hopefully some player interviews if we're lucky as well that would be amazing uh but thank you so much guys for supporting us as always it's a big step for the channel going forward so we're hoping we can we can get media passes at more events and, and really try and yeah like launch this channel even more into the stratosphere if we can uh, so yeah if you do know any friends that have you no know, not check out the channel and you think they'd enjoy it, then do remember to share it as well. Share the channel, share the videos. Also remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support because genuinely, without your guys' support, we wouldn't be getting media passes for events. Just wouldn't happen because we wouldn't have the platform. You guys are helping us to get... You've helped us get to this stage, get to this platform. We want to move beyond it, give you guys even better content. And the only way to do that is with your guys' help. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Stay safe and well. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.